Trigger warning. This video contains references to themes of suicide, domestic violence and addiction, which some individuals may find distressing. Have you ever had those feelings in life where it's like too much? Seeing what my mum went through was, it was pretty horrendous. At once for Warriors, Thori, it is like facts, man. How are we going to be when we become a father? Mm. We need to um, express that or else it's, it's just going to build and build like a balloon. One day it's just going to pop. If you have one that's not on the same page, it's these, these where you hold it. But open communication is going to help that boat get through that storm. Kia ora na katoa and welcome to Let's Get Pacific, a podcast focused on providing concepts and tools for the kete, or basket of knowledge, in dealing with suicide prevention through a Pacific lens. My name is Wiriamu, or Will, and I'll be guiding us through open, honest, and sometimes confronting talanoa about improving our mental health. Ruben Wiki, rugby league legend and NRL Hall of Famer, named the Carver King for his bowl of Carver after each match. When he retired in 2008, he held the record for most international appearances of any rugby league player in history. He runs WikiWorks Fitness with his wife, Santa. Malo lava les ufo mawa malelangi mama titu la ia tu ile ava male fa al al tele ko ruben toko ingwa ko te opuri uh waikato toko iwi uh te so male ala la fanga ma fusi sa futu la fai ma mangyangi ya momo on fata lo fa tu pa ia male mama le ole aso ya lo fa male atua Tasi mai ma fiasis wani mai awa le tatu ma futanga le nei aso fataiti ala lava mule avanoa ma lo le suifua ma lo le suifua manuia. Thanks for having me, Will. Uh, very privileged to be here, mate. Ah, oh, thank you, brother. Did you ever see that um, that would be part of your story to be sitting here today? And we're going to talk about some pretty tricky things. Yeah, no, not really. It was, I was like, you know, it touched on like humble beginnings and uh, a mum that supported three three siblings in like in Otara mm. on her own uh, with a little bit of help from her uh, family. Yeah, just any opportunity I get to, uh, you know, do a podcast or an interview and just talk about my journey and hopefully, you know, change some mindsets out there and say that you can make it if you uh, take that right path. So, mm. yeah. If we're going to talk about prevention, then... How do we talk about that? Because I know when it, you look on paper, there's all these what they call contributing factors. And actually, Māori Pacific, they are being affected overwhelmingly more. Yep. We saw a statistic, something like 15 to 24-year-olds, the highest in boys or men, the highest cause of death is now suicide. The fact that that's the leading cause of death for for you know our people is pretty horrific and mm. and so obviously we don't sit here trying to solve everything no, no, but no. if we can conduct that safe talanoa to be like here's some ways other people are confronting it you know um and it's interesting like do you remember you know in your childhood anyone talking about mental health or sports and being active was uh for us it was to you know to sweep that under under the bed and just get on with our day because we kind of thought it was just part of part of um, everyday life, you know, mm. like in those days. But now, you know, there's a lot of um, uh, places we where you can go and get some help. You know, there's some professional help out there that uh, can assist with um, with those with those with those teenagers or mm. with those uh, young men or women going through uh, stuff like. Suicide thoughts, mm. and like we come from the old school, and we just don't talk about that stuff. Have you ever had those feelings in life where it's like too much? I mean, you know, like go, go on to that dark place. I'm probably the opposite to you, bro. Mm. Growing up and seeing what my mum went through was it was pretty horrendous, you know. And that once for warriors mm. story, it is like facts, man. It's like real and. Just to cope with with what my mum went through with her uh, bad choice of partners and um, 
just going to advocate. It wasn't my dad, but mm. it's the relationships after that. So um, how, do, how do I deal with that? So, mm. so it's more, as I said, you know, swept under the bed or the rug, but mm. I can't just go outside and play. It stays they're busy, but then it hits me at a later age when I'm a bit older. So uh, I think it was in 2006 I became the White Ribbon Ambassador for New Zealand. And that's when I had to ask mum if I could tell the story. Now that was hard, you know. Um, talking about you know what happened in the past mm. and what she went through. But it had to be shared. So hopefully we could change the mindset of one person out of ten. So I was going all, all around the country with the White Ribbon and going to some rural places, Moirawa, right up north, and, you know, there's a lot of gang members willing to change change their ways, you know, and mm. uh, just hearing the so-called professional athlete go through some of the horrific stuff you see on the TV and you hear about. For me, I think it was dealing with it and expressing it with other people mm. and kind of showing them that, you know, we're all vulnerable and we all have stories. You know, you know there's a lot of skeletons in the closets. How are we going to be when we become a husband and or father yeah. to our, to my kids or, or my, and my wife? So you know, I love my wife to death. You know, we've been together 30, 30 years and uh, we discuss a lot of things and she's a strong Māori Cook Island lady which is totally the opposite to me you know i'm like real quiet and but it kind of just that yin yang relationship and mm. then we had our children and uh, getting to an age our pathways of communication open so we can deal with all sorts of problems and mm. my kids are 21 and 24 now and do you kind of think like one of the ways we can maybe talk about it is we can't let it build up, build up. It's like a pressure. I know there would be a lot of people out there that want to get off their chest, but they don't know how to actually initiate that. So by finding people that you kind of trust and start a little uh, group that you can chat with about anything and keep it in a safe safe environment, uh, probably these are the first steps. But mm -hmm. I think it is intimidating for people to talk about their problems because it's for men we don't do that apparently we don't do that but it's 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 a new it's a new era and it's 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 needed you know there's a lot of <clears throat> initiations out there that are around the well-being sector and like suicide and and that's all connected about like talk, connected around like opening up mm just peeling the layers back and mm. trying to get to the solution, you know. I was talking to my cousin who's, who's a barber. A lot of men go to a barber shop to, to talk about everything. Mm. And usually he's a DJ as well, so they go to his bar to talk, talk to him about their problems mm. under the influence, you know. But, uh, yeah, we decided to create a safe space at, at our gym for men to come in and chat if they want to chat or listen it's been pretty overwhelming like for my cousin because he's been getting calls galore and and this is supported supported by the Manero and Marae mm. and they have I think there's about three different men's programs and this one is is going really really well and we just just chewing the fat mm. and having a cry have a laugh have a mock but they're safe I also wonder if we talk about mental health, but do we really know what goes into talking about mental health? Yeah, you no, know, like my, my cousin went to Canada a few months ago for a big uh, conference around the whole order, the wellbeing side of things, mm. and and there there were a lot of experts there with PhDs and so forth. And my cousin's a, a barber, mm. you know, he put up his uh, presentation around our barbershop talk, and he just you know just Kept it real, you know. We we have no experts. We have life um, experiences, mm. and may kind of um, coincide with one of the boys' um, topics. But okay. other than that, we're just just listening. Mm. I think the listening skill is probably the the main factor at the moment at our 
men's uh, program so far. Mm, and I, I think it might be something that I experience when I podcast. That's um, a slowing down of everything. Yeah, you know, there's a bit of quiet here. Yeah. Unlike a Zoom call, you know, I can look at you in the eyes, or we can suss yeah. each other out, and yeah, there's an yeah. in-person thing. And I wonder if people might see a group of guys coming to talk with Ruben and the crew, but mm. it's more than that, eh? It it's is like, um, yeah. And, and I peeled the layers back, and they they see me as the player, the the guy who's you know running it off the kickoff, playing for his country, stuff like that. I said, well, peel it back a bit more. I'm actually. Just like you guys from, I'm from South Auckland. Mm. I have my, you know, I have my days and just, I need some, just need a day in, in my week just to get it off my chest or help, mm. you know. Mm. So when you have a moment like that, are there, are there like, is there a little checklist that you're going through um, in terms of, hey, I need some support here or, yeah. you know, it's time to get back in the gym or it's time to not do more moving? Yep. I have my exercise and we go for walks. You just got to do something, you've been active, you know, and go to the movie or something just to just go get away from it all mm. for just for an hour and mm. then just <laughs> refocus, Absolutely. reset, you know. Probably in 2008, I didn't know what it was, but I think it might have been depression due to coming to the end of my career. Uh, the club had other ideas and kind of wanted to, make me uh, finish the season early and I was like I thought I was going okay you know and and then they said well we're not going to play you so it started playing in my mind and some negative thoughts I said mate this has been my life playing footy and uh, providing for my family you know pay the bills and so that all escalated in my my um, thought process and it's, my, my body started breaking down, um, <clears throat> started getting boils and started getting like kind of nasty. Uh, so I caught myself before it got really bad. So I just confided in a few people that I re respect. Mm. And I said, oh, well, I'm going through this. How do I get out of this rut? And, you know, they just gave me some simple, simple advice, just – Wherever you're playing footy, just enjoy it and, you know, just be that person that you've always been, which is a positive person mm. with like even like journos and media and so forth because I was getting pretty nasty with those guys <laughs> asking all these silly <laughs> questions and I'm like, just leave me alone, man, mm. you know. And so I kind of flipped the script, stayed positive, played reserve grade, uh, came back and they – a few injuries so they called me back into the side I told the whole team that you know they want to get rid of me and the boys got angry mm. so I had a support from the boys um, and, and my uh, beautiful wife that's always been by my side and we flipped the script and uh, ended up playing finals footy again and off the kickoff the Soliola that's probably the, one of the reasons why I ran that hard <laughs> and had the all the mouse smart behind me and uh, yeah, and you know, Ivan, Ivan Cleary was the coach then. Um, he kind of apologised because he's an ex rugby league player, and we only we missed out by one game in that uh, in that year. But mm -hmm. I finished on my own terms, which was cool, and all that uh, worries went away. So I think it was more sticking to your strengths. What it sounds like is was a pretty gnarly situation. Yeah. It was, the pressure was building. Yeah. And because you were probably you in that scenario, you can't just pop. No. Publicly <laughs> yeah, or no. professionally, you know. And so I like how you kind of talked about, you had to scale it back, go to those two or three people. Yeah. Acknowledge that mm. there's a build up. And uh, yeah, the first one was, was my wife, Santa, mm. and she came to the club and, Gave her piece of mm, mind, so mm. you know it started from there, and then I confided in my my closest men uh, mentors and my closest friend who was Logan Swan. Yeah. So, and they made sense. So I just flipped the script, stay positive, mm. do what you do, and be happy. One of the things that they talk about with prevention is being connected into your community, and. 
yeah, I wonder what's that journey been with you? I mean, a big part of your life's in Australia. Yeah. And uh, and around League Two, and now one of the things I also hear about you is like Ruben always does things for community. You know, I've always been about the community, and I always said, and I've always stayed in touch with my old mates from school, uh, footy. So wherever I went, they were my you know my pillars getting me through like, yep. those times. You know. Um, and a bit of advice that the coach Tim Machines gave me back in the days was make sure you had some friends outside the, the circle. Mm. So you, you got your Mel Meningas and all those guys. Mm. Have some other friends out there that will keep you grounded. And I had that right throughout my career at the Raiders and at the Warriors. So mm. I'm still pretty tight with my uh, under 13 boys from <laughs> Odahu and, and the Scorpions and Hillary and, and yeah, all the, all those guys. So they. Because I represent them, you know, and um, yeah, we just we just keep it real. They talk about people who get really good at masking their emotions, and there must be an incentive to somewhat do it, especially if you're in the public eye. Mm. You know, everything's okay, we're cool, you know. But really, behind the mask, there's this um, a building up. Why do you think you were able to n- not mask? Somehow you got it out. Yeah, I think well, I think it's up to that individual to uh, confront it, eh? Mm. And like for me, um, so like <clears throat> there was two different personas for me. Like when I go on the field, I'm gonna like rip your head off, mm. you know. But then off the field, I go back to um, that boy from Altara. Mm. But I think it just being um, confident in sharing the story, you know, and, you know, always, always say be humble in the inside but be confident on the outside kind of thing. So it's more people need to know and if being a, a professional athlete talking about their feelings can help with like men out there or anyone going through depression or suicidal thoughts, you're not you're not alone because we all we all have that moment of weakness and we need to um, express that or else it's it's just gonna build and build like a balloon it's, one day it's just gonna pop so mm-hmm. um, yeah I, it's, I think it's just as I said just confronting it um, getting being comfortable with, with getting uncomfortable and that's what I did mm-hmm. like back then to share my story and you know and help with mum's healing process as well as mine yeah you know that's the mask that needs to be revealed you know and are we kind of saying that is necessary if we don't want it to build that we yeah. have to be that's the message really is yeah like, you have to you have to be open to yeah. sharing your story or um, getting some help mm. or some people that you trust talking about it because if you keep bottling it up, it's just going to explode. It must be something about also our cultures too, which encourages the bottling up. Maybe the hierarchies, you know. Yeah, sign of weakness if you're kind of talking about a kind of thing. So we, you know, the past is building it up, bottling it up and just store it away, which you can't do mm. due to different era, different mindsets. A lot of social media stuff out there for, for our um, rangatahi. Mm. You know, they get caught up in it, you know. Yeah. You're kind of known around kava, right? Yep. And when there is a kava session in place, it's it's everyone's on the same level, that you can be this person or that person. Yeah. But it's a safe space to yep. really feel like opening up. And sometimes I feel like when I'm working with youth, especially in the podcast space, that that is similar and maybe that's the WikiWorks thing too, you know, that leave your hat at the door if you're CEO. Yeah, this gift is time for people, mm-hmm. especially if you're been in the limelight. It's taking that time to just talk to them. I think it's cool when you say it because one of the things about the limelight, people think of the positives, but you're also under the light. When you're going through the tough times. Everywhere. And so to (laughs) have you say it's okay to even feel a bit crappy. Every day is not going to be perfect. Mm. And, you know, being in the limelight, that's hard work. Mm. You know, like even now, people want to say hello and Mm. uh, and like at restaurants Mm. and so forth. But Mm. you got to be polite. 
Yeah. You know, you, that's that's the values you've been instilled Absolutely. With. And it's like, oh, can you come back after mm. dinner? Mm. You know? Mm. But I reckon it's really important you take the time to have a, have a chat with them yeah. because it could save their lives. Mm. Just Absolutely. never know. The elite athletic gets the – well, this is how I see it. You'd get the best of things, good mm. nutrition, yeah. good medical advice. Yeah. Even, uh, you know, sometimes I wonder if there's these – mental skills experts is there anything that you can remember that's worth passing on for let's say our people who are not surrounded by positivity now nowadays they have the psychologists and so forth and uh, well-being um, integrity units you know all oh, those wow. all those things put in, in the clubs because mm. of social media so anything that is negative in the social media the integrity team jumps on that straight away. Um, we didn't have that back then. We just played footy, went to work. Where now that's it's full professionals, they just play footy, you know, and access to social media. Mm. They gotta watch what they say or else then, you know, the integrity union will come come down on you and find you. Mm. So from from the nineties to present day, so we'll have a survival mode here. Uh, not work nine to five, then go training. Mm. Compared to now, you got integrity units, <laughs> uh, psychologists, full time um, training, access to social media. You know, so there's there's all, a lot of um, that sounds hard access. as well. There's <laughs> a lot of access here. Yeah, you know, there's a lot of access here. Like with this generation now, we us we're kind of simple, just work hard, mm. like we do at, at work, do your job, which is playing footy. Mm. Um, get the results. Change is difficult. It, it totally is, man. And like um, being a professional athlete, there's uh, the contracts, you know, how do we get to close close to that number to survive and pay the mortgages and mm-hmm. so forth. So mm-hmm. the number one ingredient to a really healthy career is a good wife. So I, I had that. I had that for like thirty years, mate. So she came with me when Santa came over with me when I was no one, mm. and she, you know, she sacrificed her military, police, and the army. Gave up her career, came over. I was supposed to only do two years, but we ended up staying for another twelve. She's stuck by me. Did all the hard yards with the kids when they're you know, born in Australia. Uh, now we're. Uh, gym owners, mm. we're going through those battles of financially s- making sure that gym stays alive and find other ways to pay the bills. So, man, she's been yeah, you know, she's been my rock right throughout that journey Beautiful. and like even now. And if it wasn't for her, I don't think I'll be talking to you right now, man. Having someone in your corner who is really in your corner, yeah, um, they see the ups, the downs, the behind the curtain person. Yeah, and she's, um, she's the one that's, you know, through the good and the bad, mm. through my moods, um, through everything, you know, and she's always been by my side and, yeah. you know, I, I treasure so much because she's she's the reason why I am who I am today, mm. steering me in the right direction because we're like yin yang. She's outspoken, like, you know, authority to the children mm. and so forth when I'm the opposite. So it kind of keeps a relation out relationship healthy i i like the idea if you go from the pacific point of view that you know we have the vaka or the canoe and on a nice day with a beautiful vaka it's beautiful but add in a bit of a storm yeah some waves yeah. maybe that vaka has got a hole in it that picture changes yeah and i thought wow well we can't control the weather you know we can not really control the waves everyone's still gotta like um, be going in the same direction to fix that problem you know even even the hole someone's going to sacrifice the Fill that hole and make sure the other ones are paddling that fucker through the storm. If your bubble is strong, um, and the pillars are, are there, I think you'll be able to get through any storm, any anything that comes at you. If you have one that's not on the same page, it's this this where your hole is. But open communication is going to help that boat get through that storm. Yeah. Someone in the bubble is always going to be a strong-minded person. Mm. But uh, then we have to find a solution how to get around that and make sure we're going on the same same journey. Awesome. Just before we say thank you to you, I'm hoping lots of people see and hear this podcast. I hope where, so too. Where can they follow you? Where can they follow the awesome work, support the work, 
to you know to be part of all of the mahi you're doing? Yeah, sure. Just just go onto our uh, WikiWorks website, um, www.wikiworks with a z dot nz, and if you want to come and train with the with the best, come down to Otara to Heyman Street. Um, and I'm on Facebook too. Yeah. We are open page on Facebook, and any queries, just you know, we're open to doing corporate and youth and and so forth. So we're always there for for our people. Awesome, Ruben. Thanks for going on the journey. Always a pleasure. Cheers, bro. If you think you or someone you know may be at immediate risk, call 111 or connect to the following services to get help. Text the Need to Talk helpline on 1737. Call the Depression helpline on 0800 111 757 or text 4202. If you would like more information on suicide prevention training and education, visit Levar on www.leva.co.nz. More support numbers are available in the show's description.